Hello and welcome to a new series of Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Now, this is something completely different from what I've done before, with the exception of the fact that we do have a couple of extra factions. In the past, I've added factions like, for example, in the Ronin campaign. And if you would like to check out any previous series that I've created, there are numerous ones down in the description below. Anyway, you can find my mod list in the description as well, and it is a huge headache. It was a huge headache for me to get all of this working together seamlessly, and it seems like I've finally been able to do it. Anyway, you can see here, I'm using the Calradia Expanded mod, and the Calradia Expanded Kingdoms sub-mod to complement that, and that basically adds additional kingdoms because Calradia expanded. That all that does is just add some um, additional towns, villages, castles, etc., and changes their locations slightly. Now, the one that actually adds the kingdoms, well, that's obviously a, another thing that you have to add on on top of that, and this is what it does it literally adds in a whole bunch of extra. Um, extra factions and all of these have different units as well and I also have a mod called open source armory which adds I, I believe almost 500 extra items to the game so you can kind of assume that everything is going to be much more varied and you're going to see very different things happening all over the place they have also changed a little bit about the culture traits as you can see i'm clicking through here some of them have been changed quite dramatically for, for example the batanians i personally feel like this is very very powerful i think that this is i think this is different at least it's been a while since i played a batanian but from what i can remember i think that forests would give 10 percent less speed penalty to parties or was it 15 percent? i'm not entirely sure but whatever the case they've changed the percentages around a little bit and as you can see the sturgeons 20% less speed penalty from snow. Vlandians are a little bit different as well, so they have an, a 5% extra speed bonus for horsemen, and then obviously their other thing, which is 10% more upgrade experience from battles. And then you have a number of other extra factions on top of that. So you have things like um, these guys, for example, that have a 5% extra speed bonus for infantry and 5% more upgrade experience from battles. You have the Nordlings, which are primarily a village raiding and, and looting party faction sort of thing. So you can see here 10% faster looting, which is very, very cool. Then you also have the Republic right here. And all of these have their very own towns as well just so you know they do have their own towns they have their own units and on top of all of this i've also downloaded i'm going to be playing with the republic culture by the way but yes on top of all of this i've also downloaded two mods that add more realism to, to the combat so there's real re realistic combat overhaul i have installed and also realistic combat AI overhaul as well. So the AI will now use tactics at absolutely every single stage of the game in comparison to in the base game, they need about 150 to 200 tactics to be able to utilize those things. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this and I hope you are as well. So let's actually just see if I can, uh, okay, there we go, done. Fantastic. <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm doing with him. Anyway, I have no idea what kind of character I want to make. That was the that, that's the main thing. I've I've not spent any time thinking about what I want to do. Oh yeah, by the way, I also installed diplomacy as well. So we now have diplomacy options as well as a number of other things. And I think I'm actually going to go for a bit of trade here. I'm going to try to earn more money through trade, at least initially. And we also have the ability to use charm as well. So I'm thinking we'll go for engineering here as well as uh, trade and charm. I want as much trade as possible if, it'll, if, if I can. I mean, that's going to be kind of important. Riding and bow skill will be important as well, but I actually want to use a polearm if, if I can. So I'm thinking we'll probably go for polearm one-handed, something like that. And then we also have the ability here, uh, tactics and leadership. 
one-handed, two-handed, uh, Valor. I don't really care too much about Valor or traits or anything like that. Charm and Steward, this is going to be really, really nice in my opinion. So we're going to do that. And now there's another thing that I've installed. It is a combination of four different mods, three of them made by the same person or the same people. And these mods all have to do with the interactions between your character and the NPCs and the NPCs within themselves. So basically that means that if an AI is capable of capturing another AI, they have a percentage chance, dependent on their relation with that person, of executing them. Oh yes, of executing them. That is, in my opinion, extremely extremely interesting and i also by the way have um i have implemented a percentage chance for my own character to die yeah so everything is up for grabs in this particular series i can die i can be executed i basically uh, can force i can actually i can actually force people to, to surrender as well there's also that i'm going to be playing as byron in this one I think that's makes, uh, that makes quite a bit of sense. Let's go for realistic across the board right here. This is going to be very, very difficult. <laughs> Just so you know. And I think we're good. There we go. All right, let's start and hope it doesn't crash. Because now here's the thing. I've spent the last, I think, two and a half days. Oh, hilarious that he says it's been three days now. Yes, no. I've spent two and a half days basically trying to mod the game into a way that is completely seamless and, and very, well, stable. Because, uh, yeah, it's a bit difficult to actually get that to work most of the time. Bear Tilt is going to be our family name, as is usual. And now I just have to choose something. I Should I go for the standard bear? I could go for the standard bear. I don't want a black banner, though. I want something a little bit... Um, uh, I should have downloaded, oh, you know, that's 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 the funny thing. I really should have downloaded a mod that actually gives me more options in the banner. That's the one thing that I didn't really do. <laughs> Bit of an imbecile, aren't I? Yes, spend that much time and don't get a banner mod? Ah, you ah, should have done that. Oh, well, never mind. I think this looks like a pretty decent color and a nice color scheme as well. So let's hope it doesn't crash. Cross our fingers on that. Oh, phew. Okay, it did not. Fantastic. I've, I've been testing it numerous times, so I'm very, very pleased that it did not do that this time either. All right, so let's just take a quick look at what we have going on here. Okay, so we have a bunch in Charm. We have a bunch in Trade. That's fantastic. And we also want to get some more in Trade as we speak. So let's have a look. 15% decrease in sell price penalty for equipment or for trade goods. I am actually going to be doing quite a bit of trading in terms of trade goods themselves. So I'm going to take trade goods for the moment. Bear in mind that I am also going to be doing as many battles as I can get my hands on because I don't want to be a passive trading character. I want to be getting in to do damage as much as possible. We're going to be taking diplomacy here because having a consistent 15% reduced barter penalty is in my opinion very very useful we're going to be specking into vigor as well so that i can potentially level up my one-handed and my pole arms relatively fast we're also going to go and try and recruit some people too now i do have another mod by the name of chaos's tweaks now that's a kind of um spiritual successor shall we say to bannerlord tweaks and that has changed a number of things about the game as well and uh, I, I couldn't possibly go through absolutely every single setting that i have for that but um i just wanted you to know that i have that installed as well if you've taken a look at the mod list then you already know um but this should be um a very stable uh, mod list for the version that i'm currently playing on which is 1.5 Point nine, I think. I think that's what I'm playing on right now. Oh, we got to, we got to be careful about these manhunters. Oh dear. Maybe we can work out something. How much money? Uh, how much money do you need? Oh, he doesn't need that much. He only needs two twenty. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, just just go. Yeah, manhunters. I don't really want to get involved with manhunters right now if I can help it. And as you can see, these guys are already doing battle. That that's pretty significant. 
That is pretty significant. Okay. Oh, more man. Really? More man hunters? Are you serious right now? More man. They are so fast as well. It's absolutely impossible for me to be able to get away from these guys. It's crazy. Okay. Well, whatever the case. I think my herd, but yes, my herd deficit is so incredibly bad right now. Okay, we're going to have to actually sell five of these. We're going to get 780 for that, which is going to recoup all of our losses, and it's going to make us move, move much faster, which is really nice too. Anyway, these guys are going to be selling us wool, so I'm actually going, I'm probably going to do this. I will buy the products from you for 384. I have no idea how much he gave me, actually, so let me take a quick look. He gave me eight. Really? I spent 384 on 8 wool. Well, yeah, that's um, <laughs> that's that's not very good, is it? No, that is not very good at all. But thankfully, I'm now moving much faster because my herd deficit has now evaporated. Oh, yeah, by the way, NPCs have the ability to surrender as well as surrendering, surrendering to me. They can also surrender to the people that are currently fighting them. So other other NPCs can also surrender to each other. And they can also they can also be killed in action too. So if they are on the world map and they're fighting each other, there is a percentage chance for them to be killed in action. Because the way that it works at the moment in the base game is that if I am personally in a battle, then enemy lords have well, enemy and friendly lords actually have a percentage chance of being killed. However, that does not extend to battle to campaign map battles, and that's the main thing that this particular mod fixes. So I think that that's pretty cool. Um, the uh, the tournaments have also been changed slightly because obviously the AI overhaul is um, is is incorporated into this as well. AI overhaul uh, is uh, going to make everything much more difficult, and it, uh, people are going to be able to um, to block and parry very easily. I'm going to actually try and outrun this guy. Yes, it seems like I can do that. That's fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to check. A variety of different places for tasks and things like that as well because while I would love to be able to do these it's just it's just gonna be very difficult for me um, right now uh, let me see if I can sell this wool oh this is actually not not bad this is actually not selling for a terribly bad amount I'm actually gonna sell these I think right here we're gonna get a very small very small well loss I guess but I think it's going to be okay. Now I'm just going to continue looking for good trades as well. Amatatus can buy cheese for 63 and we can buy it for 29. That's pretty decent. Amatatus is only over there as well. We might want to go over there, but not at the moment. I'm just going to make sure that I can make it in time. Oh, I have 27 days. Okay, yes, I easily have enough time to be able to get over there. So that is all very well and good. Okay, so obviously I haven't even shown you the map yet. I should really show you the map so you can actually see the full extent and scope of the land now because it is pretty significant. Okay, let me actually just take a quick look. Escort merchant caravan, caravan ambush. Okay, I think I'll probably do the caravan ambush if I can, but I don't have, <laughs> don't have any troops. That's the main problem here. Okay, who do I need to deliver this to? Who is it? Ah, uh, the Minter guy. This guy. All right. Let's speak to him. There we go. About the task. There we go. Five. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So, 400 gold. Not too bad. I... Yeah, not, yeah, not, not great. Not great. Okay, so Caravan Ambush. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that right now with just six units. It's more than likely not going to happen. But let me just continue recruiting units at the moment. Because I'd like to do battle with some looters, if at all possible. These looters right here, they're looking pretty. Uh, they're looking pretty tasty. Oh, these guys are looking. These are, these guys are looking better. Hello there. All right, let's do this. Okay, so this is going to be my first battle with all of these mods installed. Because I haven't actually done any battling. I've just been attempting to get them 
you know, stable as much as possible. Um, I've also downloaded a map pack that adds, I believe, almost 20 additional maps. I think that this was recommended by one of you in the comments on uh, one of my other series, and I do appreciate that. Thank you very much, because that is going to result in much more variety for the uh, for the series as a whole. I am <laughs> I am riding Everyone. on the worst horse in the history of the land. This is really really slow. Okay, these guys are going to be really, really harsh as well. Come on now. Let's see if I can do some damage. Let's see if I can do some damage. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. It very much depends. Oh, nice. That was some good damage right there. And maybe we can get some more. Yeah, these guys are obviously very, very good at defense as well. Yeah, let's do Oh, look at that. 77 damage and still not a kill right through the chest. Yeah, so basically every single weapon including bows and crossbows and all that sort of thing, has uh, physics applied to it in some way or another. So every single action you take in terms of an attack is going to have these values applied. And the same thing when in regards to interacting with armor and defenses and shields and so on. And the mod also makes it much better for you to use pole arms at po point blank range because if you use pole arms in a tournament for example you don't want one of those poking matches where you're going to basically do two damage per hit so that's obviously uh, something that is very very nice and something that i'm very much looking forward to trying out when i enter my first tournament anyway we did end up losing one um, one of our people, but that's okay. And we got two renown and 1.2 morale from this. And as you can see, this is what we are getting here as well. But thanks to Chaos's tweaks, we are now gaining relation in regards to how many bandits we were able to kill in the area. Now, this is... Uh, this could be construed as being quite powerful, but you have to bear in mind that these relation increases they are only being applied in a scattered way. So anything within, I think, a thousand units of range, so in other words, this village, this village, this village, and this town, they are going to have all of those relation points spread evenly to each of them. So you're not going to get eight with every single one of these notables, because that would be way too powerful. But you're going to get eight spread throughout. So... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that that's pretty cool. I like that quite a bit. I mean, you can see here that some of these people don't even like me right now, which is kind of sad, but there you go. Anyway, let's take a look at the trade screen right now because I'd like to see if I can maybe find some good deals. Uh, Amatatus is obviously having some maybe good stuff. Uh, I, oh, okay, okay, okay. So Lagata actually does need some grain. So I'm thinking maybe what we want to do is we want to go back to Jalmaris and we want to buy some grain and then come back here because I'm thinking, ah, I can sell, oh, I can sell oil at Amatatis for a decent amount. Look at that. That's pretty good. Maybe we want to do that. Let's do a couple of, a uh, couple of pieces of oil, I guess. We've struck oil. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, maybe this is going to be good. Um... Yeah, Jalmaris, Jalmaris. Okay, so yeah, we can get that for seven. Okay, so I'm thinking that that's going to be pretty nice. I don't really... That's the thing. I do want to do tasks, but I think the tasks are going to be too difficult at, the, at this point. Oh, look at that. Hurunag. Hurunag was killed in battle. You see that? And that is all thanks to the Heroes Must Die mod, which is another thing that I have installed. And every single NPC has a chance to be killed in battles anytime basically anytime and in my opinion that's very very cool so we're gonna see how that goes because i'm still doing some tweaks to it and i don't know what kind of percentage is a decent percentage for them to have because i don't really want to have a percentage where it's basically impossible for them to die but i don't want a percentage that enables them basically to die every single battle they have so it's kind of a bit of a weird position i'm in at this point so i'm thinking i'm just going to tweak it a little bit here and there and i think it might be a bit too high at the moment i put it on i think 10 percent or something like that so every single time some npc dies in a battle somewhere they have a 10 percent chance to die which i think is kind of i mean 
technically, if they were to lose in a battle, in a real battle, then they're more than likely going to perish if the enemy hates them enough, right? So it kind of makes sense in that way. But on the other hand, this is a game and we don't really want to have <laughs> every single NPC dying in like, what? two weeks or something like that that would be pretty bad wouldn't it so yeah i've i've got to get a nice um a nice balance going i think and uh, then we'll see what we can do i think my guys have leveled up yes they have okay so we're going to go for some imperial archers right here and then we're going to take a look at john maris hopefully they still have grain for a decent amount a decent cost yes they certainly do Oil can be sold here, but we're not getting that much. Seems like oil... Ah, oil sells at Amatatis for much more, as you can quite clearly tell. Yeah, that is much, much better. So let me actually just buy another five, and then we'll buy some grain here too. I need to buy some horses as well, so let's buy three Sumter horses, just so that we can move around a little bit quicker. I'm spending a... Th I don't have enough money, are you serious? That is awful. Okay, I'll just sell these shoes then. There we go. I still haven't shown you the map, so let me actually just show you the map real quick. Okay, so this is how it's looking right now, and you can see here that every single faction is split off into numerous factions, and they have been uh, changed, they've been added to, and they have different units as well. So, for example, if I were to go to... Um, who, who, who are we used to here? The Kuzate, I guess? Should we, should we go to the Kuzate? Yeah, let's go to the Kuzate. So, let's have a look at what they have available to them. So, as you can see right here, they have a number of new units. They have Glaive Men, they have Darkhan Glaive Men right there. They have a number of militia they have the noble sons as we are used to we've got some zan guards these guys are tier six yeah so they've actually gained an additional unit in their noble line which is pretty crazy in my opinion they they were already extremely strong so i'm i'm a little bit worried about that to be honest but okay that should oh wait a minute oh they might actually be um a bit of a... Oh, it might be a bit of a difference, actually. Oh, that's interesting. But yeah, this is the troop tree, as you can see it right here. And um, I no doubt the stats have been uh, changed as well and all that stuff. But yeah, generally, you have a bit of a civil war going on between the two Vlandian factions as well, because there are two Vlandian factions now as well. One is called the Cortanian Vlandia, and the other one is called Royalist Vlandia. So you do have actual conflict in between these two peoples. Instead of Vlandia being a united front with just a little bit of infighting here and there, they actually do fight each other with this mod, which I very much appreciate. So I'm thinking that that's quite cool. Anyway, I'm going to go back to Lagata now, and hopefully I'll be able to sell my grain for a decent amount. We should probably pick up a couple of tasks here and there as well. It would probably make more sense for me to do that than anything else. Let me actually just see what this task is right here. It might be something good. You need tools. Okay, well, uh, too, too bad for you then, sir. Yes. It probably will be too bad for him. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, I would like to do some more battling as well, if at all possible. Okay, let's just go and trade here. And sell this grain for 12 per 1. Hmm, I don't think that's actually good. As you can see, they just got a delivery. Yeah, they just got a delivery. So I'm, I'm now eternally disappointed, and we're not getting any trade skill whatsoever. So... I guess I will literally just head back to Amatatis at this point. If I do see any looters, then of course I will try to uh, battle, uh, you know, battle them as much as I possibly can, and um, hopefully we're going to be able to uh, level up quite nicely too. Oh, it seems like I actually did level up. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, I don't know what kind of pole arms I'm going to end up using because I absolutely love using slashing pole arms, but a lot of people in the past have said to me, hey, that might be a bit too powerful, you know, might be a bit too powerful. So I'm thinking maybe we'll go for a thrusting pole arm this time around. Anyway, infantry troops in the formation you're leading have their damage increased by 2%, and cavalry troops in the formation you're leading have their damage increased by 2%. I'm going to go for the cavalry one, because we're mostly going to be mounted in this series. So that's what we're going to do. 
And we also want to spend a point in writing skill. That's going to make sense. Let's go for some endurance. There we go. All right, fantastic. And as far as I'm aware, we have many more looters available for us to fight as well. Uh, I believe that um, one of the mods that I installed actually does do that too. And look at this. It's one of the new maps, I think. Look at look at how cool the water looks, actually. I, I don't know why, but the, the water looks much better normally. I mean, uh, much better than normally. And it looks very good now. Okay, so I'm just going to tell my people... To, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to tell them to auto-delegate, and we're actually going to see what happens. Because the AI is also using tactics of some kind. Nice damage. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be kind of sneaky, aren't they? They're gonna be kind of sneaky, and they're gonna be pretty good at what they do. Ow! I got hit on the head. That's not very nice of them, is it? Okay, here we go. Okay, we got to be careful of that pole arm. Nice. Took out the pillager, took out the looter with a with charge damage. Did you see that? My my mount actually did something in charge damage. That's amazing. I don't have any mods to change that by the way. So I'm not entirely sure why that happened, but oh, it seems like my forces are actually getting killed now. My my morale has absolutely just died, basically. We just lost way too many units in that one fell swoop. But thankfully I do have some... <laughs> thankfully I have some ranged units and they're actually able to carry me to victory here. Nice. Nice. Okay, come on now. Oh, in the head. Ouch. That's gotta hurt. That's gotta hurt. Okay, there we go. We actually did that. Fantastic. Now... Thankfully, we are going to be getting some really, really nice relation gains from this. So you're not going to have to spam, you know, spam quests and tasks and helping out people every single second of every single day to be able to get to the higher levels of recruiting from those places. And bear in mind that there's so many more villages in the mod. Um, so it does generally makes sense for us to uh, have something like that that increases the relation. Got to be a, a bit careful here though. Don't really want to get murdered here by that 27 stack. And there's an army of poachers. I think we probably want to deal with the army of poachers. We do want to deal with them, but it's going to be a little bit of a problem at the moment. I'm going to sell all the oil that I have. That's 1500 profit, which is actually really nice. And now, what else can I do here? Is there anything else here that is actually going to be profitable for me? It's highly unlikely. Beer is actually kind of good here. I can sell it at Jean Maris for almost double the cost. But that's basically it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be buying anything from here. Ah, there we go. Four, tra f really? Four skill points? Really? Come on now. I feel like I should have gotten much more for that. Oh well, never mind. Okay, yeah, now we're entering Manhunter territory once again. I really, really do not like the Manhunters. Ooh, what's this? What is this? This is a new uh, new unit right here. Oh, I have not seen one of these before. This is a Throne Weapon Specialist by the looks of things. So it very much depends on what we want to do. Do we want to go for Throne Weapons who are, you know, equipped with reasonably good shields and everything? I mean... Can you tell what they're, what they're actually using? Yeah, you can. You can see what their shield is. Yeah, so what about the last guy down here? He's using a decorated oval shield. He also has a mace. So he's really good at taking prisoners, I guess. Kind of. And what, what, does these, what, what do these guys have? They have pretty good stuff. These archers don't come equipped with shields, which is actually kind of interesting. But I'm going to continue to go for archers at the moment. And what do we have here? This is a different faction once again. These guys have longbowmen and lancers. Okay, I'm going to go for footmen here because I'd like to actually have a couple of lancers. I um, Okay, so now here's the thing. I've been tweeting a little bit about how I'm getting on with this whole modding business. And I wanted to originally install scum and villainy because so many people have recommended the, uh, the mod and the associated mods with with it 
to me over um, quite a few months. And I thought to myself, okay, we're going to do that. And then I go through the entire process of installing it. And then I realize, oh, it's actually not working for the version that I want to play. So, yeah, that uh, that put paid to that. So then I needed, needed to find a, a different way to go about it, which was really sad, actually, because Scum and Villainy is one of the, in my opinion at least, seems like one of the most fleshed out mods that you're going to ever see for a bandit slash criminal based character. So, uh, and that's definitely something that I really wanted to do. Anyway, we're going to go into Poros here because I'd like to buy some grain. I hope that they have some grain for a cheap price. It's not that cheap. Not that cheap, but I'm going to do it nevertheless because we kind of need to. And then we can go and hand it in. Hopefully these guys are not going to attack me right now. Could you just leave me alone? Oh, those manhunters, they want me like no one's business. I would appreciate it if they would not. There's their 35. And we gain... Is that is that literally all I gained? No, I gained a level as well. And I gained relation as well. Okay, that's, that's actually fine. Okay. Just going to speak to this guy real quick. Because I think he has something to tell me about... This, there we go, that's absolutely fine. I could technically do a task for him as well if I wanted to, but I don't really want to right now. So let's just move on to... Oh, hello. We've got some looters off to the left. I think that that could be quite lucrative for us. Okay, I don't... Uh, I, I don't know whether they've actually um, revamped the looter... Mm, yeah, kind of, but I think you do need Veterans Respect. Do you still need veterans' respect to be able to recruit um, recruit uh, bandits, right? You, you, I mean, you should, right? Let me actually have a look. Yeah, veterans' respect, there they are. You're able to convert bandits into regular troops. Yeah, okay. Oh, I actually leveled up as well. Of course I did. Okay, so let me have a look here. What do I want to go for? Well, I probably want to level up my pole arms more, but I'm actually going to go for some more riding skill because at the moment my riding skill is absolutely awful. And I would like to be able to improve that as much as I possibly can so that I can start riding on these much better mounts um, as fast as possible, really. Okay. Oh, this might be problematic. These guys actually have more combat strength than I do. And, oh, look at this map. They've actually added little fireflies. What? I had no idea that they were they were actually doing that kind of stuff. That's really quite amazing. That adds so much, so much atmosphere. Oh, I really wanted to skewer this guy really badly. Oh well, never mind. Let's see if we can maybe get him. My horse is so slow. Oh, I really wish I was better at this. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a little bit of damage. Okay, yeah, I'm going to need to do something to the main globu globule of units because otherwise this is going to result in a huge, huge defeat. We're going to have to tell these guys to go and auto-delegate. Tell these guys to auto-delegate as well. Oh, no! I think I might... Uh, I think I might be dead. No? No? We're alive? Nice. Nice kill. Nice kill. Uh, I need more. I need more of that, please. I need more of that. I really do need to get a lance as well, because being able to couch lance in these kinds of situations would be so incredibly useful. Seems like the enemy is now fleeing, which is fantastic. Oh, look at how much damage we're actually dealing. Pretty good. Okay, let me see. I want to try and eliminate as many people as possible. I don't have the better looting mod, actually, which is something that I was contemplating adding to this series. But I thought to myself, yeah, maybe it's going to be a little bit imbalanced because what that does is it gives you a chance to loot the gear from your fallen enemies. And while that may seem like a pretty cool thing and, and very realistic, it does make the economy a little bit useless because when you, well, defeat a vassal or something like that in, in in combat, then you have the ability to loot their stuff. And it's basically going to result in you having an item that is worth like, I don't know, 60k or 100k or something. And then if you, you know, defeat a number of different vassals, then you're just going to have 
numerous amounts of these items and it's just going to be very very easy to make money and that's obviously not what I want I don't really want to make it that easy I'd like to make it realistic you know so trade is obviously quite realistic in that in that way as well okay so let's have a look caravan ambush probably not going to be doing that either we don't we just don't have enough combat strength at the moment to be able to do anything like that okay let's just take a quick look and see what else we can do probably going to be heading down to Azurai territory let's face it Azurai territory is pretty much the best way of getting money early on there's just no ifs ands or buts about it really it just is the best way to make cash because you gain so many different quests to do with trading to so many different quests to do with well pretty much everything in regards to that so it really helps a massive amount do these guys need grain as well are you serious okay apparently they need grain as well so i guess i'm just going to go to poros real quick and we're just going to buy a bunch of grain and then go back there really really quickly um, i'm going to be doing some smithing as well but not right now i might do it a little bit later on obviously not in this episode but later on in the series and i have no idea how much they want so i'm just going to buy 40. i think that's a bit too much to be honest i think i spent way too much oh look at that sicanus actually surrendered to this fellow so they, they can actually surrender and then go into uh into jail or into prison or something like that and then they can uh people can barter for a way um for a way out and i i think that the mods that we have installed at this point are i think they're pretty good i think they're pretty good right now so we'll see how it goes and if you have any suggestions for any other mods that could potentially be included then by all means let me know but Obviously, I'm a little bit dubious about adding things in the middle of a series. So maybe if you suggest it right now, then I might be able to add it. And then we'll see what happens. Anyway, there we go. I'm actually buying this horse because I want to use this instead of the Sumter horse that I had. Because the Sumter horse is just so slow. It really is painful to ride on it. Anyway, Charm Skill is now at 50. 20% 20 more renown from battles or plus one renown for each issue resolved. I think 20% more renown from battles sounds like the way to go almost every single time. Anyway, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. If you would like to see more of this extremely busy modded playthrough of Bannerlord, then uh, let me know. And um, I'm... <laughs> I, I, I'm like forever worried now that I'm going to get killed because I have that mod and I it has it has that chance you know it has that chance for me to die for me to actually die and if I have no one in my clan at the moment which I don't that's game over so I suppose we'll see what happens I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>